So today we are reading from Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali by Sri Laraguna Das Kuswami, verse 88. Manju Vadane, fair faced girl, on the full moon day of Shravana, August, named Raksha Purnima, your brother Sridam comes to Yavat with 10,000 cows to satisfy the greedy Chatila before affectionately taking you along to Varshana where your parents lovingly fondle you in front of me as you melt with weeping from happiness and sorrow. O Manju Vadane, fair faced girl, on the full moon day of Shravana, August. Named Raksha Purnima, your brother Sridam comes to Yavat with 10,000 cows to satisfy the greedy Chatila before affectionately taking you along to Varshana, where your parents lovingly fondle you in front of me as you melt with weeping from happiness and sorrow. So Radhe, we can say something little bit about these words because it's unique words in Vilapakusumanjali and uh, describing special lila which is starting in Varshane in the home of Radharani's parents Vishabhanu and Kirtida. So we didn't read so often this verse but it's also very nice and in showing how deep the love in Vrindavan is, is present and in all Vrajavasis towards Swamini. And in these words, for those devotees who are not still familiar with Radharani's family, here is mentioning the brother of Radharani, Sridam. So Sridam is one of the most intimate and confidential friend with Krishna. He looks like Krishna. He is the same age like Krishna. He has the same color like Krishna. And uh, this verse is describing one very important festival which is going on every year in Vrindavan. And this Raksha Purnima festival <clears throat> and those who have been in Vrindavan they know that in that time brothers and sisters are using this opportunity to bind each other with some wraps, some small bracelets 
around the hands, which represents their love and loyalty to each other. So this is just occasional lila. It's a lila for the public. But behind this public lila is the reason, very deep reason, that Radhika, because of this festival, of sisterhood and brotherhood, use this opportunity to leave Yavat and go to the Varshane, to the parents' home. And she is going very happily because she likes to see her parents, but also she knows that she will meet Krishna in Varshane, in different kunjas around Varshane, more freely than because she is in the parents' home, is not in Jatila's home, in the home of her so-called husband, where she is always watched by superiors. And in Yavat, Radharani is always in some tension. When I meet my lover, and she is in fear that maybe someone see her. So this kind of fears, this kind of tensions, this kind of situations which are going on in Yavat brings one specific intensity of rasa. But when Radharani is in her home with mother and father, she is more relaxed. She is completely out of fear because she is at home. And the meetings with Krishna, which will appear during the day or during the night, has another flavor, more relaxed flavor. And Sridham here using this festival of Raksha Bandana, this festival to bring Radhika from Yavat to Varshane. And it's very interesting that he brings with him 10,000 cows. Ragunat is explaining that he wants to bribe Jatila. You know, because the Jatila is quite heavy person. She is always watching very carefully Radhika to not escape from Yavat. Like a mother-in-law, you know. This relationship between girls, ladies, and mother-in-laws sometimes can be very complicated. And we can see here the source of these complications. is coming directly from the relationship between Radhika and Jatila, her mother-in-law. But in this case, it helps Rasa to increase. And Sridham is trying to bribe Jatila with different gifts. 10,000 cows, not with one cow. All these cows are Surabi cows, you know. 
not with 10 cows, not with 100 cows, 1,000, 10,000. Because he wants to be sure that this crooked lady, Jatila means crookedness, will surely accept this gift. You know, he couldn't come in the home of Radharani, his own sister, without any gift. This is the custom, you know, when you go somewhere, you always bring some small gift. But this is a not small gift. This huge gift is showing how Jatila is a very heavy person that you have to bribe her with such an opulence. So Sridham is very smart and he is bringing all these presents in the form of cows, thousand cows, but also jewels, different gifts. And when Raghunath is meditating on this scene, on this scene which is the, he is describing, he has actually very nice fun. Because he is witnessing Shimata Radharani in one very blissful situation. Her face is bright. I am going back to my parents. I will be free finally. And freely I will meet my beloved. So he is addressing Radharani Manju Vadana, fair-faced girl. Gautama, please, your mic. And when he said, fair-faced girl, he exactly knows which kind of feelings are present in Radharani, that her face is so bright, full of brilliance and light. And each time when Raghunath is addressing Radharani with some specific name, although translation can be the same, we should follow the commentaries of Acharyas and we should follow other sentences, descriptions, so that we can feel and understand the deep meanings behind this addressing. For example, many, many times in Vilapa Kusumanjali, in Radhara Sashadanidi, it is said that Radhika has a restless eyes. Lolakshi, Ayatakshi, and so on and so on. And, but Ragunat and this translation is the same, restless eye girl. But when we continue to read the other part of the verse by the Kripa, we can feel the differences of this restlessness. Sometimes she is so in, in, in some anxiety to feel, to meet. Mohan. Sometimes her restless eyes are the sign of her mana. Sometimes her restless eyes are the sign of the fear. So Raghunath is expert Manjari, expert Radharani's maidservant. And he knows just exactly the mind and the heart 
of Radharani in that particular moment. And by knowing that, he is addressing her according to her own feelings. So here Radharani is going back to Varshana, to the parental house, home. And his Raghunath, like Tulsi, is addressing Radharani Manjuvandane, fair faced girl, you are so happy. But in the same time, some drops of tears are coming down on your cheeks. And because of that, your face, you look so, so nice and sweet. I said something. Maybe someone can add more we are not reading so often this kind of lila, but it brings also light about Paraki above from a different angle. Sorry, I remember we discussed with Lila with Shilguru there here, and he explained what every three months situa situation is changing. Three months she met Radhika stand in Yavat in Manjar with her, and then Sridam coming and she is going for three months to ya uh, Varshana. Is uh, Manjaris and like this. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know that. <laughs> Thank you very much. I heard this from Gordon. He told to us about yeah, his yeah. lila. So it nice. was one year ago, Raksha Bandana festival, uh -huh. and he discussed this. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Radicharan. So you see how important it is to enter deep in the words. And then by the commentaries which are now coming of Ananta Das Babaji and other Acharyas and explanations of our Guru Dev. So we can prepare our consciousness, purify our consciousness for the bhajan during our listening. One lila picture after the other arises before the spiritualized eyes of Sri Raghunath. And when his relishable visions vanish, he laments and manifests another prayer. His mind is immersed in the ocean of the sweetness and beauty of the divine pair. And there, the treasure of eloquence has very little value. is very difficult to put it in words. Words are totally helpless here. Still, the stream of bhav naturally wants to come out over the path of words. But alas, words are not able 
to hold such a powerful stream. Words become stunned here, strangled and suffocating in the grip of power. In this situation, Bhav blooms up in the heart of anyone who depends on it and comes to a sensitive devotee in only a slight way in the form of words. So, oh. We can see here that each word of Rasik devotee, especially like uh, Raghunath Das, is each syllable is deep expression of his Baba. And it's not a bhava which is coming and going, but this is bhava which is so condensed that it's becoming more condensed and more condensed in each second. This is a premika devotee. So Baba is explaining here how it's very difficult, it's not possible at all to explain experience of transcendental lila. And when Acharyas are doing that. They are doing only because Radhika is al allowing them. Their words are direct manifestation of Radha Kripa. Their Smarana is also direct manifestation of Radha Kripa. So when they recollect this smarana experience, deep, deep experiences in the form of written words. This is real drop of ocean of Radha Kripa. And Baba is giving, I like this, yesterday I read this commentary, I completely forgot on these words. And I saw this commentary which Kishoriji was reading. And I would like to ask her again from the point still the stream of Baba and so on and so on. Mm. Words are totally helpless here. Still, the stream of bhava naturally wants to come out over the path of words. But Ailas, words are not able to hold such a powerful stream. So Radha. the Bab, yes, please, Udavaj. No, no, please finish your reflection, my dear. No, 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 no. Jai Shri Radha, Jai Guru Jai. I'm so happy that you mentioned Paraki Bab. Paraki Bab is, in very narrow sense, it means feelings for the wife of someone else. And sometimes we speak of this and wonder whether the gopis are married and whether Radha is married. And whether 
Krishna is then having a relation with the wife of someone else. But this is only a narrow meaning, and we need to keep our hearts open to a much more important meaning, which is Parikya Bhav is feelings that break the rules. Feelings that are so wide and deep and intense that they cannot be captured by logics, by rules and regulations. That the moment they're captured by some fixed idea or fixed concept, then they always transcend. They go beyond. And this is how, then, we can understand this comment about the language. Because in the end, language is a set of rules. You have grammar, you have the lexicon, if you don't follow the rules, then you can't be understood. But Parakya Bhav, the, the emotions of the Leela, they, they crack the rules of language too. They're too big and too deep and too intense to be captured in language. And yet language is all that we have to communicate with each other, to share. Well, it's not all we have, is it? But so we try to say something, and then it's cracked, it's broken, because the love is too great. And then we say it again, and then it's cracked again. So this language is a very weak and poor friend to us when we want to understand uh, love. Which is why I like to tell myself that we're all very shy in our this group and only a few of us are ta talking a lot. I like to tell myself it's because the words cannot capture the feelings that everyone is having. And I believe that. But it's important to understand that it doesn't go by words, even though the words are all we really have in order to share. We have to both share with the words and Imagine with our hearts something that's much more bigger and deeper. Radhe. Yeah. Yeah. Radhe, thank you. Words can be useful in philosophy, in logic, in arguments, in fights. But if someone asks you, do you love me? And can you explain me? How you love me? You are speechless. You, you, I very, I love you very much because you are so nice, so beautiful. I like you, but it, it's so funny explanation actually. But if you ask me about universe, then I will start to elaborate with so many words and words and philosophy, philosophical points. But when the love is the subject, only eyes are talking. And only lovers can understand the lovers. And only person who feels the love of other person really understands the heart of a person who said to him or her, I love you, my dear. Because he was relishing it. Love has to be relished, not to be speak about it. So Baba is saying here, words are not able to hold a powerful stream of Baba. But again, 
we are reading here the words and we are listening the words and we are depending on the words. But which kind of words? Words which are glorifying Parakya Bhav, Yuga Lakishore, purest love which is exists. And this kind of words, even if they are not properly put it in the proper grammatical sentences, are so sweet and relishable. So for that reason, person doesn't have to be so knowledgeable. Because the words of Acharyas who are speaking about rasa are actually the words of their hearts. And we need to open heart, our heart and through our ears and to receive their bhava, their emotions in our heart. And yesterday in Japanese Zoom, we were reading about Gurudev's Temple of Love. Yeah? And it said, one mellow, one bhava is very important, Gurudev is saying, always, always, always. Because when we are situated in one mellow, then we can really, really relish the words of Rasik devotee. Because they are not just the words, they are vibration of their hearts. Words become stunned here. Strangled and suffocating in the grip of Bhava. In this situation, Bhava blooms up in the heart of anyone who depends on it and comes to a sensitive devotee in only a slight way, in the form of words. But still, it is as if this Dina Bhasha, inferior medium of word, Trusts a huge stream of water on the heart's ears of a bhava grahi sensitive audience, helping the bhava of a sensitive devotee like Raghunathas Goswami to reveal itself. So we should go slowly through this sentence and explanations. Kishoriji, from but still mm. this this big sentence. Mm. Mm. But still it is as if this Dina Bhasa, which means inferior medium of words, trusts a huge stream of water on the heart's ears of a Bhavagrahi sensitive audience. 
stop please now this is the first part which is important so we heard actually that manifestation of bhava which is hidden in the heart of devotee is manifesting just little through his mouth in the form of some words, imperfect words. Why they are imperfect in one sense and perfect in another sense? They are perfect because they are describing and trying to describe perfection of transcendence perfection of lila but in the same time they are not perfect because there is no material words with which we can explain such a kind of subject so it sounds contradiction but it's revealing one very important thing that bhava stage, level of bhakti is the goal for sadaka. And this, in that stage of bhava, the heart is melting completely. And because of this melting, devotee sees crystally clear his own Swarup and he is seeing crystally clear his beloved Ishtad or Radharani. And the effect, uh, the symptom of that kind of level is that devotee want to hide that. And the more he is hiding it, the tendency of Bhava is to burst out. It's like uh, these pots, pressing pots, you know, when you put something to cook and then press with this, how you call it, licked. And licked. pressure. Uh -huh. pressure cooker yeah pressure cooker. pressure cooker and the more you cook the more you cook the pressure in the pot is stronger more intense more intense more intense in one moment it can burst out this is of so, course the this is the meaning of the word ecstasy yes Ex-stasis. it's bursting out beyond where we are yes and this is the madness this is transcendental madness and this is transcendental intoxication. So now, I, thanks to this metaphor, metaphor with the pressure cooker, uh, I try to say what I see with the words. You, you are saying that inside is the, is the bhava, the emotions within the heart and the words will only say so much about what is inside, but they give some hint. So like the pressure cooker, when you have some some sapchi inside there, and what comes out is a little smell of this, you, you know, you get some hint of what is inside, but it's not the whole thing. Yes, and sensitive devotee is smelling this flavor which is coming from the this steam. <laughs> and this is the sensitive devotee. And he is like a bee. He is catching every drop of this flavor. And he wants to expose his heart to this just slight, 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 slight flavors of condensed Mahabhav. 
This is exactly this is such an important point, Kishori Didi, that we have to have, we need the pressure cooker so that we can relish. If there were no pressure cooker, then it would just be Brahman, formless, <laughs> tasteless. And this is why we need language too, even though language is imperfect. We need it so that we can get a hint and smell and relish and taste, and then it's broken open. And then it's then we try again and we say it again. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to be able to have a devotional relation to this feeling, we need to stop it up temporarily and then let it go beyond in the pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. This is another meaning of parakya bhav, is the meaning behind the words. Yes, yes. <laughs> But mm. these hints are actually huge streams which are splashing the hearts of Sadaka through the ears. And Baba is saying now, through the ears, hearts, ears of sensitive audience. We heard so many times sensitive individuals. But Baba is saying here, sensitive audience. What sensitive audience is doing? This is congregational chanting of mm -hmm. sensitive devotees in the same mellow, in the same mood. When these devotees, this Sangha, with full condensed emotions in their respectful hearts, relish this, then each individual in this Sangha, in this group, is growing and growing and blooming and blooming. This is Sankirtana. And this is why it's so important to have a proper, nice Sangha in the same mood. And when we say the same mood, it's not just theoretically. I want to be Manjari. It's not enough. It's not the same mood. Same mood when we feel certain specific subject or detail in that subject. And our hearts are trembling then. And when ten hearts are trembling, then each individual heart is blooming like a flower more and more and more. And if it's done, with the guidance of pure Rasik devotees, then this kind of fortune and relishment, it's not possible to describe. <laughs> there is no words for such kind of great mercy, opportunity and fortune. Only soul inside the person can feel it and vibrate it. Thank goodness. If there were words, then we would just go and buy it in the bookshop and never okay. meet each other. Yes. And this is why you are right, Udavaji. It's not possible only through books to relish <laughs> this. <laughs> this is the mystery. And for us, or for me, who, who has a lot of impersonal background, you know, it's quite a big, huge step which I have to make, you know, because it's very easy to dive in the books. But to dive 
in the words of Acharyas, to, through my brothers and sisters, through the words of Rasik devotees, Gurudev, it's completely another, another dimension. So that is why Baba is saying this huge stream of water, water of Baba, on the heart's ears, it's very interesting, heart's ears, we can listen with the mind or we can listen with the heart. Mm. This is two kinds of listening. And Baba is saying clearly which kind of listening is the most important. Heart ears of the audience and then helping Baba of sensitive devotee to reveal itself. Mm. Perfect. Please continue. Yeah. The power of the speaker's bhava is infused in his words. Therefore, their result, prowess, influence, and authority are endless and inexhaustible. That is why there is no greater means to attain bhava than to hear and chant the bhava mai vani, ecstatic words of the great saints. There is no other way. Now, thank you, Udama, we can see, understand the ecstatic words which burst <laughs> out. So it's very clearly here is said, what, what is the benefit of listening? But in the same time, Baba is warning us from whom? you are listening. Many people knows to speak, many devotees, very sweetly, very nicely, very correctly, very attractively. They know so many lilas from different angles. But if they don't have their own staibav, It can damage mm. those who are listening. Mm. This is the greatest mystery in the process of hearing. From whom we are hearing. Words can be so beautiful, so nice, but without emotions. Without inspirations that we feel something and ask ourselves, what is my relationship? What is my position? What is my spiritual identity? And those devotees who are older devotees, they have this kind of experience through many years of practicing. So many devotees were past, lecturers, who were speaking so nicely. But ultimately, it is completely dry. Because they didn't have their own Baba. And words are not important, but Baba is important. If I say, good morning, it's just the words. 
but with which kind of feeling I'm saying good morning. This is going in the heart of that person to whom I'm saying good morning. You understand? And then this Bhaktivinoda Thakur is one book, I forgot, Bhakti Loka or something like that. He's saying what is real association. Because in our previous times, we have been so reluctant, you know, we didn't want to associate with anyone who is not a devotee, who doesn't have a tilak in previous times, you know, fanatic times. But when I read the description of Bhakti no Thakur, when he is saying, what does it mean, association? Then I completely changed my consciousness and automatically my behavior. He said, association starts in the moment when you give your heart to someone. You can come in the shop, you can come to your professor, and you can speak about so many subject matters, especially in the shops, in the bakery, in the grocery, and you speak with different people, but you are not giving the heart to them. And in that way, they don't have influence. But in moment, when we give the heart, influence is starting to infuse, to be infused in our heart. So we should be careful to whom we are giving our heart and in which way. Because the speaker, Baba is saying here, the power of speaker's Baba is infused in his words. And this is the reason why Guru Dev and our Acharyas are so many times are speaking. Define your goal and then expose your heart, your ears to those who are speaking from that Baba. This is the great secret of Sadhana Bhakti. If we want really to advance in our desirable Baba, we should associate with those in the same mood. But sometimes we can be a little impersonal and we can say, oh, this is the, everything is the same. Yes, on one level, everything is the same. On the deeper level, nothing is the same. Everything is full of rasa and personal. If I say, all women are so beautiful and nice. Yes, this is the truth. Depends from, from the, which angle you are looking for. But my wife, we will not agree with that. You understand the point? He will, he will ask more explanations. Because love is personal thing. And love brings rasa, relishing of this juice in loving relationship. And for this, it's very important to be situated in one mellow. Radhika never say, oh, all Krishna's friends, boyfriends are so beautiful, 
so nice. I like them all so much. Her heart is always just one point directed to her beloved. Now, one example comes to me from my very material point of view that, for example, when I read these words that are written here, e even if I am alone and I read it out loud, it's different when I read this and try to understand. Or when I read this to senior devotees or to Gurudev, then their words will be infused with so much power that it makes me to understand the meaning behind these words also. So even here in this platform of material life it's the same words but a very different feeling if Gurudev is explaining or if I am just reading if I know I don't know if it's if you can understand what I mean but yes thank you very much for this sharing because like you said when you are reading now in front of all of us, your words to yourself are sounding differently. When you are sitting at your home and you are reading to yourself or to Kanai, yeah. and this is the reason the same thing is going to me also. With my speaking, Udavaji knows that. Mm, who is here? I cannot see all devotees. But this is the point why Gurudev is pointing out that we have to share. It doesn't have to be so smart. We don't need smart people. But sharing is helping, first of all, is helping to that person who is talking, mm -hmm. that he can hear himself, check himself, and be connected with words of Acharyas which he is repeating, not his own words. Jai Oh, Gora Chandra. Radhe Radhe Gora Chandra Ji. So nice. It's so cold. It's so cold in your room. Yes. Wow. Getting cold. <laughs> but it's a new blanket. It's a new jacket. So I enjoy. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> so, Kishori say, reading alone is not the same when we are reading to others or sharing. But sometimes we are reading alone. And for that it's important not just to open the book and read. We have to invoke the mercy of Gurudev and the Acharyas by reading Mangala Acharam, by praying to Gurudev, Pancha Tattva Mantra, Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha. So we are never alone. The mercy is always with us, but we have to invoke that. We have to pray before reading the book. Then it can also happen that we relish more even by reading alone. Mm -hmm. 
there is always association, visible, invisible. But we have to invoke that. You see every book and the, always there is Mangal Acharan before. Praying to each and everyone <laughs> before something happens. Mm. Some two weeks ago we had Q&A with the Japanese devotee. And now I know little the nature, character, no? little shy. Don't want to ask question. Don't want to show that maybe I don't know something. <laughs> but that is not the subject. We listen so beautifully that actually it's not about the words. It's about to invite or let's say it's about to make the sadhu speak something. Huh? Just make him open his mouth and something should come out. It doesn't matter what he is talking, mm -hmm. but his words are soaked and full of bhav. You see Gurudev, he doing a lot of small talk. Huh? When you come in the room, how are you? How is your family? This and that. But it still is exchange of feelings. He giving his bath with every word he's speaking. So sometimes questions are not to gain some information or to learn something. It's just to make the sun speak, making the nectar. You see Gopinath, no? he Asking Gurudev so sweet questions sometimes. He can answer himself from the level of knowledge. Probably he knows the answer. But he just wants to make Gurudev speak. That the bath <laughs> is coming. Mm -hmm. And this whole process of Shravan, no? this is the main thing, listening, listening, listening. The bath coming through the ears. Mahaprabhu in front of Jagannath, he's singing a local pop song. It's not about philosophy. <laughs> but bath, feelings. Baba writing in one of his commentaries that sensitive devotees, when they are at Radhakun, sometimes they can listen how Raghunath Das Kuswami is weeping in the night at Radhakun. This weeping is not even words. It's just some sound, some vibration, some bar. Only to listen, ha radhe, <laughs> from the mouth of Rasika Vaishnava can melt our. Ha Radhe. <laughs> That's enough. Radhe Jai. Jai Ho. Thank you. And I really want to encourage all devotees for the questions. <laughs> like Gora Chandra said, I was also very, very shy, especially in the beginning, for asking the questions. And I read from Vishwana Chakra Thakur one beautiful 
encouragement. Like he said, someone who is asking questions, he has a great benefit for doing that. Mm -hmm. Those who are listening the answer, they have even more benefit. And those who are answering, they have the most benefit. Because they have to be directly connected to the all Guru Parampara lineage. And they have opportunity to realize that through their mouths, all other Acharyas are talking. So everyone has a benefit. And like Gorachanda said, if you just scratch the sadhu, it doesn't matter what he is answering. But we should be prepared to listen his bath. And sometimes we are confused. Oh, I ask Gurudev, Something and he's answering me something else completely, isn't it? <laughs> no, I'm very disappointed. He didn't answer my question. <laughs> it was the question of your heart and his heart, and answer for your heart from his heart. <laughs> Please, Gorachan. This one of the most important verses in the Bhagavad Gita, how the devotees, they sit together and they enlighten each other by talking about me, Krishna said. Mm. They relish, I mean, enlighten sometimes also sound little like, ah, they learn more, they understand more deeply, but what happening is that they, they relish. They make the rasa flow and that is increasing without limit. From heart to heart to heart is a flow of emotions that growing and they relish. So, this kata is so nourishing and so ecstatic. Manjaris, gopis, what they are doing? They also only share and share and share and talk to each other and relish so much. So, yeah. Because they are bhava grahi sensitive audience <laughs> in that is important so there are two levels my dears when we ask questions there are the questions which are helping us to know some things better and this is perfectly all right but there is another kind of questions which are helping us to relish and for that kind of questions, we should be a little bit more situated in the bath. Otherwise, if we are in association of one-pointed devotees who are talking about specific mood, and we just ask or share something which doesn't have so, it's not so close with that mood. Then, like Gurudev said, then bad smell is starting to coming out. This is Rasabas, how I say. So we should also be very, very, very 
cautious, careful, but in the same time, very open. Yeah. And to have proper discrimination. That is. Please, Kishoreji, continue. In the previous verse, Sri Raghunath relished the sweetness of Radharani's coronation. And in this verse, he relishes the parental love of Mother Kirtida and Father Prishabhanu. The personifications of parental love as Swamini goes to her parental home. The Bada Sevikas maid servants like Tulasi stay with Swamini as if they are her shadow. And they experience all of Swamini's joy and sorrows, just like her, as if her feelings are reflected in the mirrors of their hearts. The great poet Karnapura who sucked the nectar out of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's toe, describes this as follows in his book, Alankar Gaushtubha. Sri Krishna says, O fawn-eyed girls, as long as you did not meet your girlfriends, you can see in the mirror whether you are happy or sad. But when your girlfriends stand before you, then what is the use of mirrors for you? They are just like mirrors themselves. When tears are falling from your eyes, they also fall from their eyes. When you have goose pimples on your body, they also have them. When you laugh, they also laugh. And when you are morose, they are also sad. This situation is visible to the utmost in Radha's maidservant. So this is a clear position of Radharani's maidservants. Whatever Radhika is feeling, same intensity her manjaris are feeling. All emotions from Radharani's hearts are reflecting in the hearts of Kinkaris. And it can be visible through the Kinkaris eyes. And not only that, when Radhika sends Kinkaris to Krishna, to Nandagram, to bring him some sweets, she is infusing her emotions in the heart of Kinkaris. And like a messengers, they are bringing Radharani's emotions together with the sweets and are giving Krishna. 
And only by looking them, Krishna knows how Radharani is feeling in that moment. He is relishing. And then Manjaris are looking him. And then again, when they come back to Yavat, they are bringing Krishna's emotions to Radharani, like a most precious gift. And they stand in front of her, and Radhika is staring and staring and staring in their eyes. And she feels her beloved. So this is the beauty of this transcendent loving relationship when the feelings are reflecting in the mirrors of the hearts. Same thing is going to Sadaka. He wants to expose his heart to the heart of Rasik devotee. And he wants that from his or her Guru Manjari, all emotions reflect on his or her heart. Then Bhava slowly but surely is appearing. And Baba is saying here, this situation is visible to the utmost in Radha's maidservants. Radha Palya Dasis. Those who took complete shelter of beloved Shimataratara. The Raksha Purnima is an auspicious day occur occurring on the full moon day of August on which brothers and sisters swear love and protection to each other by binding protecting armlets around each other's wrists. Therefore, this pastime, like the previous one, is an occasional, annual pastime, not one who eternally returns daily. Nevertheless, because of its transcendental nature, the pastime can be meditated on at any time. One day before this auspicious event, Sridam mounts his horse and goes to Yavat, the abode of Sri Radhika's mother in law. Chattila, accompanied by footmen and palanquins. Eager to satisfy Chattila, who does not want to let Sri Radhika go, Sridam asks her, What do you want as a present? Chatila, as he expected, wants cows. 
So he gives her 10,000 cows just to appease her. Shiradika and her girlfriends and maidservants then climbed into the palanquins and Sridam leads them to Varshama. Shiradika's parental home, where there is less control over her than in Yavat. There, it is easier for Shiradika to go out to meet Krishna. So she feels very happy about going. Without knowing it, Sridam Chandra is helping Sri Radhika, his sister, and Sri Krishna, his best friend, to meet each other for loving affairs. Everyone in Vrindavan knowingly or unknowingly assists Radhika and Mohan in their relish of Sringara. There is one kind of relish of this Sringara. When she Radha stays in her in-laws abode. And there is another kind of relish. When she stays in her parents abode. The kinkaris come along with Sri Radhika wherever she goes. Be it in Yavat or in Varshane, and are thus blessed with these different kinds of savor. That's why the service of Sri Radha is called the most extraordinary goal of life. So two kinds of Shringa Rasa. One which is going on in Yavat and one which is going on in Varshane. And Manjaris are going in the boat place, never separated any moment from Radharani. And because of that, they can relish this boat, the boat of this Shingar union between Radha and Mohan. Their amorous pastimes. But the difference is, is that in the parental home, Varshane, Radharani is relaxed. She is beloved daughter of her father, Rishabhavanu, and mother, Kirtida, who are so eager to receive her. And like her parents, you know, they're with loving child, they say, you can do whatever you like. Uh, just be happy. But it's not the case in Yavat with mother-in-law, which is so crooked person, actually. This mother-of-law is so crooked person. Of course, to increase rasa, this is tattva, this is okay. But she's <laughs> in the nature, she is a crooked person, because she wants 10,000 cows. And how this crookedness is a transcendence, yes. But we can see here that even in Aralila of Radha Krishna, 
pastimes. You have to bribe the crooked person. There are two types of crookedness, material crookedness and transcendental spiritual crookedness. When someone crooked, very crooked in material life, you have very intelligently to bribe him very intelligently, you have to always praise him. I will give you this. You are so this and that. I will give you this position, that position. No, I'm not satisfied. I want highest position. Okay, I will give you highest position. Gurudev is doing same thing with us. You know, but the crookedness in Lila, transcendental world, is helping to nourish the beauty of Paraki above. And this crooked lady, which makes so much obstacles to Radharani, you know, must be bright. And this is the cleverness. Here we see cleverness of Sridam, who is the brother of Radharani. But Manjaris are even more and more and more clever than he is. How to this crooked person, how to cheat? Because crooked person, you have to cheat. You have to become better cheater than he is. And Gurudev is also using this technique on his shishyas in very sweet, loving way. Because he knows I have a job, business with crooked people. I have to change them somehow. But this crookedness, we, why I'm talking about this? Because this is a quality. But is there material quality? This is then, this is really, really bad and ugly, destroying. But when someone is crooked in the pastimes, transcendental, pure pastimes, and unknowingly serve Parakya Bhava, then this crookedness is something which is okay. Udavaji, you want to say something? <laughs> no. But really just, enjoying, but really enjoying listening. <laughs> Everything what is bad in material world is the highest in spiritual world. Karma is a very sinful activity in material world. But the same karma which is endowed with prema is the highest feeling and quality. Because the goal of the prema is to give the pleasure to be loved. Nothing, nothing for myself. Even the fear is a nectar. Even the jealous is the nectar. Even the anger is a nectar. In material world, all these qualities and behaviors are making destruction to the person and to the others. But when they are touched with pure love, they are becoming worshipful qualities. So maybe we can stop here if someone wants to because it's too late. We should meditate a little bit about this beautiful relationship between father and mother of Radharani. And Gurudev is saying so many times the kingdom of 
Rishabhanu is much, much bigger than kingdom of Nanda Maharaj. Of course, kingdom of Nanda Maharaj is very, very famous because Supreme Personality of Godhead appears there. But the kingdom where the embodiment of Prema appears, the kingdom of Rishabhanu, is indescribable, brilliant and opulent. Because only love can make someone really rich. Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. I will add one thing. Please. <clears throat> you spoke so nice about the oneness of Radhika and her maidservant. That everything what Radharani feels, 100%, the Manjari also feeling that. And that is the importance of our relation with Guru Dev. We have to practice to come and tune with him. Because Manjaris all are connected with Radharani, so they are also connected with each other. So if we want to make progress in our spiritual life, the main thing is coming in tune with the mood of Gurudev. That is the most important thing. This tuning is our homework. Yeah. Jarade, very nectar, nectar lecture. <laughs> it's not a lecture, is it? we are just sharing. No. Rade, rade. I'm talking too much. This is why it, it sounds like a lecture. <laughs> Sorry. Rade, rade, devotees. Also, words of Anantara's Bhavaji, they are so precious. That is so amazing what he's writing. Yeah. How he is writing that. That is just unbelievable. So much mercy, my God. Yeah. Really. It's really. And when we now, when this Zoom stops, and if you make one experiment, please try to do it. I will tell you what. Read again what we already read now. And you will see how understanding, relishing, is deeper and deeper and blooming even more after this beautiful association. I'm practicing this. This is my secret. It's not example, but suggestion. Tade, rade.